you have probably seen some of the awesome stuff we have been doing with our VersaCup 4x4, and if you haven't, you're missing out. We've been making car parts, custom signs, and trophies over this past year, and we absolutely love that thing. But for someone like me who doesn't have a large detached garage, what are you supposed to do? Well, that's why we brought out the VersaCut 2x2. And today, we're gonna put it to use and make some custom interior parts for the C10. For any of you 80s car lovers out there, you're all too aware that people in the 80s must have loved smoking, but apparently never drank a soda because there are no cup holders. And my square body pickup is no exception. But we're going to solve that and design a simple bench seat cup holder so I'm not suffering anymore. To start, we open up Fusion 360 to start designing our piece. Now, real quick, people ask us all the time, but what if I don't want to pay for a subscription? It's too expensive. It's not. Fusion offers a free personal account if you're making stuff for yourself, so you can get your feet wet before starting your CNC business. First thing, we're going to need some holes in our metal for where our cups will ultimately go. And I picked up a couple stainless marine inserts from Amazon. So with those measurements, I can make a box with the minimum outer dimensions I need and punch two holes in it. Next, I will need to space the cup holder platform out a bit from the bench seat, so there's room for the beverages not to hit the seat itself. Like there should be enough room for a big gulp to fit in there without having to wedge it. We'll add an inch and a half for good measure. Then I'm adding length for a riser, so the platform sits up enough and clears the floor. This has to be at least as high as the length of the inserts are deep. Finally, I add another inch, so I have room to bolt this onto the bottom of the bench seat. Now, realistically, this would probably work, but it's not very pretty. So let's add a bit of contour to the front and prevent cutting my jeans on a sharp corner later on. Using the fit point spline tool, I round out the front using the original square box as a guide. After a couple minutes, I get something I'm happy with. After saving, I hit extrude so I can get a preview of what this will look like in metal. It's at this point I realize what you all have. I've made a giant slice of bread. What are you gonna do? Moving along, I click through to the manufacturer work area so we can set this up for the VersaCut 2x2. I click cutting, then over to the pop-up window, under tool, hit select. If you've added the CNC 40 before, you can skip this. If not, I'll show you how now. At the top of the screen, hit the plus icon. Under cutting, hit plasma cutter. Click cutter. We'll change the nozzle width to 1.2 millimeters. And hit accept. Now we can select the tool we just added. Under the pop-up window, select geometry and click the part you designed. Then move over to the passes tab. We make sure our compensation type is in computer. And sideways compensation is left. Select your outer corner mode. I'm going with roll around corner. And very important, click smoothing. On my first iteration of this, I didn't select smoothing, which made the machine act really erratic along the smooth arcs, like our top corners of our bread, or cup holder. Then hit okay. Now we can check how this will cut by clicking on actions in the top of the bar and then simulate. And playing through the animation. Happy with everything, I navigate back to the Manufacture tab. Select my part under Setups on the left, and then click the Post Process icon. This is where we'll enter the G-code for the VersaCut 2x2 plasma table. You can download this off the product page on our website. Next to the Post line, hit the Open File icon. Select Import, and navigate to the downloaded G-code and hit Open. Now that it's in your local library, you can highlight and then click Select. Then under Program, give your part a meaningful name. We'll name ours C10 Cup Holder and the iteration. Tell Fusion where you want to save the file by selecting an output folder. This could be local or the USB drive that you load into your CNC table. Finally, hit Post. You'll see your file successfully posted in the bottom right corner. With all that out of the way, and your file loaded onto that USB drive, 
we can move to the next step, cutting. So as mentioned at the beginning of this video, we're going to use the VersaCut 2x2 for this project. We head back to R&D and set the table up. Really, this just means filling it up with cutting fluid, some water, and setting up the hand torch. If you didn't know, we shipped the 2x2 with the hand torch so you can use it both on and off the plasma table. Another great feature if you're tight on room. With the table set, we can load on our metal. I did some test cuts earlier with 18 gauge mild steel and they were a bit flimsy. So for the final product, we're going for some 16 gauge stainless we had on hand for some extra rigidity. Now let's flip on the plasma cutter and load our files into the CNC table. After turning on, simply hit any key. Then hit F2 for files, USB, and using arrow keys, navigate to the file you want to load in. For us, that's the C10 cup holder 5 file. It took a couple iterations to get it right. And hit enter. Now you should see a preview of your part on the display. To ensure that everything is lined up correctly, your metal, the torch, and your start point, it's always a good idea to either run demo or frame. From the main screen, click F7, manual move. Then F7, frame. The CNC table will now run around the outer edges of the part. Satisfied with all of that, we can cut. Simply hit the green button and then enter. And in just about a minute and a half, we have our fresh cut part. But hold on, we're not quite done yet. Anytime you plasma cut something, there's always some slag on the edges of the part. And this is no exception. There's also a white vinyl coating that was used to protect the stainless while shipping. Using a flap wheel on the backside, we can smooth out those edges and grind that stubborn vinyl off. With the part all cleaned up, we can turn it from this flat sheet into its final form by bending it into the proper shape. We reference our original CAD model and mark out an inch from the bottom and six inches from the bottom for our bend lines. If your part has a top and bottom, you'll have to think about where you're marking it to make sure you bend it on the correct side. To bend this, we pop over to the 24 inch electro brake and make our two 90 degree bends. This could be done on a traditional box and pan brake as well. Just make sure you note the order of bends as you may have a maximum depth you can run into. All right, with that, we have a functional cup holder to mount onto the bench seat. However, we're going to take it one step further and throw a top coat on this. So since this is stainless, there's a couple ways you could go. You could leave it for an industrial look or scuff it using a gray scuff pad or use the SCT for a brushed finish. It's metal, so powder coating is also an option. This would be great for under hood items or suspension components, but we're gonna go the easy route and coat it in semi-gloss trim black. This stuff's awesome because it can be applied over bare metal without needing a primer. To take care of any remaining blemishes and to give the metal some tooth for the paint to adhere to, we run over both sides with 320 grit and then 400 grit on a DA. Then a quick wipe down with pre-painting prep to make sure there's no grease or dirt left on the surface and we can start painting. We do three light coats with about 10 minutes in between. The next day, we can slide our stainless inserts in for our final result. Now, if you're interested in making a set of cup holders for your bench seat, we'll include the CNC file in the description below. And if you need any of the other tools and products we used in this video, you can find it all at eastwood.com.